Hello. Hey there. The whole thing about me is I am very obsessed with history. And I think naturally, since I am a history fan, I am also addicted to museums. And one thing about art museums is it's not just about the art and seeing a uh, display of artistic genius. There's history behind every single piece of art. That's why I love going to history museums and art museums. Naturally, that road leads us to the Louvre. Yeah, so this is actually my second time going to Louvre. I still felt the excitement and pride that I had as the first time because Louvre, the, the glass pyramid entrance that's world famous, was designed by Ian Pei or Pei Yuming, a Chinese American architect. And he got a lot of pushback back in the days. It was in the 1980s. Can you imagine that? The glass pyramid in the middle of a very classic building. So there were a lot of criticisms. But so now it becomes uh, one of the most acclaimed architecture in the world. Yeah, and his uh, design for the Pyramid the Louvre, I think that that's one of the like identifying landmarks of Paris in general now. I mean, whenever you think of the Louvre, you immediately think of the Pyramid, but whenever you think of Paris, Eiffel Tower, Sacre Coeur, and the Pyramid. So even as a second time going to Louvre, it's still a very overwhelming experience because there's just ginormous amount of artworks and paintings and statues and sculptures everywhere and it's too overwhelming. I, I remember when I was younger, I tried to kind of like go to almost every single one of them but now I just learned my lesson that I only focus on one or two pieces and so I don't feel like I'm overwhelmed so I can still enjoy myself. No matter how busy the museum is, you will always go to see Mona Lisa because that's just a fun experience. It's not necessary for us to see the painting itself. It's more for the crowd and the fun and the, the lines. It's just so fun. This is a newer wing of the Museum of Louvre and it's really interesting because it has this really, really like modern undulating roof and with aluminum mesh from the outside and also the inside. So when you walk around the building, you see the natural light kind of like penetrate through the roof but without like really hurting your eyes or hurting all these artifacts and um, art pieces. And I think the undulating like really draws your attention to each piece of the artwork here. But when you come all the way to the lower point and then it kind of like a big revelation of the giant like mosaic um, on the lower level. And it's really interesting to be able to see this artwork in front of your eyes after you entering this sort of like pavilion or new wind. It's not necessarily new, it's actually been like here for almost 10 years. This is a really intricate and nice work. And when I was upstairs and I saw this like undulating roof from the other side of the building and it was really immediately caught my eyes because it had this like a golden hue. Um, but it's not out of place because you know, like in Louvre, you see a lot of like a neutral and goldens and like a grayish zinc toned um, roofs. So when you see it, you just like make you very, very curious and you want to see what's hidden beneath. And voila, it's just like a really, really nice exhibition of Islamic artworks. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Here uh, we are looking at some artifacts that deal with the, the assimilation of Greek culture with Egyptian. Over here, uh, we have portraits of different rulers of the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt. Ptolemy was the first emperor of the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt, but he was actually a Greek. During the, the time of Alexander the Great, once Alexander passed away, his empire was divvied up between a lot of his generals. Ptolemy, who I think was his, his closest general, um, he got Egypt. 
just moving on down the line, you had uh, Ptolemy II, who was apparently known as the sister-loving king of Egypt. And over here you have either the second or third Cleopatra. Of course, not the Cleopatra that everybody knows about. Cleopatra, that uh, the famous Cleopatra is actually um, about a hundred or hundred years or a little bit less than a hundred years before um, she was the uh, became the wife of Julius Caesar of course that uh, didn't go did not have a happy ending for either of them but yeah this is the uh, these are the Ptolemies as stated earlier I'm obsessed with history and ancient history is something that really draws me but the Louvre's exhibits really cover all eras of human history, and so I was a kid in a candy store. I've always tried, until the Louvre, tried to go through an entire museum in a day. It's impossible there. There's just way, way, way too much. I feel like we've only seen about 60% of the museum. So at some point, someday, we will return. So the next day, Faith was feeling a little bit under the weather. I am going to the pharmacy because Faith has a little bit of a cold, some laryngitis maybe, not COVID, we tested it. She tested negative for that last night. And I am going to the pharmacy down the block to get her some meds to hopefully uh, clear that crap up. So, yay. Yeah, I, I'm sure it was a very easy experience for you to go to a French pharmacy to ask for something you don't even know how to pronounce. <laughs> no, it wasn't easy at all. I went there and started actually like mimicking <laughs> symptoms. I started being like, medicine? And uh, they caught on pretty quickly. I mean, it all worked out in the end, but it was a, uh, it showed me that I had a lot to learn when it came to uh, the French language. So don't laugh at me. So I was among one of you guys, always laugh at people making those locks like by the touristy spot. But when I was there, like everybody's doing it and everybody's selling it and you just feel like, okay, maybe I'll try one as well. So, so we did it, um, but I don't regret. We kind of talked about maybe in five years or 10 years, we have to go back and trying to challenge ourselves to see if we can find the ones that we locked over there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's fun. It's not that expensive either. <laughs> yeah, and it'll be nice like in five to 10 years if we go back, mm -hmm. maybe with, a, I don't know, maybe another person uh, with us, we'll see. Uh, uh, I we can, know about we, can it. <laughs> we can scour through the thousands of locks and try to find ours. So it could be a fun little scavenger hunt. Exactly. Thank you. 
So our friend Cameron and Fernanda recommended us to go to this cafe that where they shot Amelie. Mm -hmm. And I was a huge fan of the movie. I have watched it so many times, and I actually was a teenager the first time I watched it with my friend Zephyr. I just, I just love everything about the movie and the style, the pictures, and the music.、Mm. And so it was such a dream come true when we went to that cafe.、Yeah. And there are just so many like displays and、mm -hmm. the, the posters and the little, little、um, memorabilia. Yeah, yeah, it was so much fun. And I just like imagine myself being Amelie in that cafe. Also, it didn't hurt that the food was incredible. I was about to say the same. And we had great espresso. We also have creme brulee. It was fantastic too. So yeah, our Montmartre day was、uh, exactly what we needed because most of our time on this trip has been very, very loaded. Not really any room for any kind of flexibility or spontaneity. It was nice to kind of just take like a brief kind of off day and just explore. Uh, without really any plan. I remember I started to be sicker, or feeling sicker that night. So I was like, "Okay, I have to make this hard decision." So I said, "John, you should probably just go out by yourself and keep exploring. I might just stay at home, like stay at our Airbnb for a couple of days until I feel much, much better,、uh, which I did later. But John was able to explore some of the places that you have always been wanting to go, and we initially planned to go to、um, Mont. Uh, Mont Saint Michel. Mont Saint Michel, yeah, and it was so beautiful, but we didn't get to go, so it was quite a bummer.、Mm -hmm. But my mom has been like bugging me about, hey, can you take a, take me to Paris as well? So I think next time we might just go on as a family trip and go see it eventually.、Mm -hmm. So yeah, Paris is not some place that you only want to go once in your lifetime. You might just go multiple times. So I'm not too worried. We'll definitely go back. Oh yeah, for sure. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. What she said. <laughs> <laughs>